What's up? Much love and respect to everyone watching. This is just going to be a quick video on the John ja Morant situation. And most of us already know that he's in trouble once again for doing the same thing, which is flashing a gun on social media. And he's been involved in other incidents as well. But um, it's very unfortunate that he continues to make bad decisions. But as a man, he must be held accountable for certain things that he's doing. And we know the first time he got in trouble, I think he got like an eight game suspension and he had to do a few interviews and uh, supposedly he had to go to some type of counseling or rehab or something like that. But they pretty much swept it under the rug and, um, you know, Nike kept them as well. And that's one of the things I want to talk about because we know back last year when Kyrie put that documentary out on his platform, um, the Hebrew to Negroes the film, we know that uh, they pretty much dropped them. They did drop him and he had a whole bunch of heat and things he had to go through. And that should tell you something as a so-called black person that like in John Moran's situation when you, you know, carrying guns and flashing guns and making yourself look bad, making your people look bad, they don't mind keeping you. But uh, when you are trying to speak the truth and you're trying to tell your people who you are, you're trying to wake certain people up. That's something they can't tolerate. Of course, Nike's a billion dollar industry. It's not about the money for them. They cannot allow certain information to get out, even though it's gonna happen either way. It's biblical prophecy, but we see what happened with Kyrie. And I'm not sure what exactly all his beliefs are. I'm not sure what they are, but I know certain things he was saying was true. So I'm gonna show one of those clips really quick. Again, I'm gonna repeat, I don't know how the label becomes justified because you guys ask me the same questions over and over again but this is not going to turn into a spin around cycle questions upon questions I told you guys how i felt i respect all walks of life and embrace all walks of life that's where i sit i think what people want to hear though is yes or no on that question yes sir I, no. I cannot be anti-semitic if i know where i come from all right so we seen the clip right there and i want to clear something up as well because earlier i said it's not all about money for nike but of course it is about money for nike and these major corporations but if you do certain things these corporations will still cut you off if they feel like you offended them or if you offended the so-called jewish community that's when money is no longer in the equation because they will cut you off. And that's one of the problems that so-called black people have is that some of us don't have a moral standard to where we won't do certain things for money or you know, we won't cut certain things off if it's against our you know morals. And that's why we have so many people that sell out and that's why they promote a lot of this rap music that's destroying our people and the hip hop culture in general. I'm not saying that's not a part of the situation with John Morant. Yeah, he is influenced heavily by the music, but as a man, he still has to know better than what he's doing. There's really no excuse for it. And uh, yeah, it's possible that Nike may cut him off now since it's the second time around, but either way, that first time around, they had no problem with it. And of course, I don't want the man to lose his money anyway, but my, my point is they were quick to cut Kyrie off or even the situation with Kanye with Adidas and all the other companies that cut him off for saying certain things even though his situation is a little different than Kyrie because Kyrie wasn't even really saying that much he just put out a documentary and then you know people went crazy about it but either way these companies were willing to release them just for speaking certain things that they believe now if they happen to keep Ja Morant you know it'll make them look even worse but I mean, nothing really surprised me at this point, so we'll just have to see what happens. And it's very unfortunate that a lot of times in the black community that uh, you don't really get respect unless you're an athlete or a rapper or some type of thug or criminal. And uh, that type of thinking has really set our people back. But uh, John Morant, he seems to definitely be playing some type of character. We know that uh, he did not grow up in those type of circumstances and he grew up in a two-parent household which is a very good thing but for some reason he is trying to be somebody who he's not and we seen from the movie juice that uh that can be a very dangerous thing yo what's so cute what's up man chilling got it yeah i got it come on small check this out. check out Wait. Oh, man, I ain't never shot nobody before. Yo, be careful with that, man. It's loaded. Look, old man 
Clueless is not gonna draw on somebody that got a gun on him. Worry about it. It's gonna be a piece of cake, Q. Yeah, man, it'll be a piece of cake. We go in, right before 11, get the loot, check. The whole thing won't take no longer than three fucking minutes. Did y'all decide this, this morning when I wasn't there? Yeah. When you was at your uh, appointment. Check this shit, man. I got a DJ Saturday night, you know what I'm saying? I'm not trying to miss that for nobody. Guess you got a disappointment. I ain't disappointing shit. Maybe not. There's gonna be a lot of DJs there, right? Yeah. So how do they pick who goes when? It's like 40 DJs, 20 sets. All I know is I go seven. See, because we're gonna need an alibi. Since you're going seven, that'll give us an opportunity to go in. Dude, we gotta do check. Oh, God. I think that'll work. <laughs> Yo, what about the cops, man? Bishop, check it out. There's two overlapping patrols about three minutes apart. So we just gotta be fast. Yo, I think we should plan this another time. This nigga's scared! Ain't nobody scared, man. I just told you I had a DJ Saturday Fuck night. Fuck that shit! We're going Saturday night, and that's it. I hold on to the gun. Why should he hold on to the gun? Because I already got it, motherfucker. Just let him hold the gun, man. We'll just start new shit. Let me act stupid. Come on. Shut the hell up. Yeah, so most of us have seen that movie before, and of course, I don't expect John ja Morant to take it that far, but he is playing a very dangerous game by continually flashing these guns and doing certain things he shouldn't be doing. And of course, I'm a supporter of legal gun ownership, but um, the way John ja Morant is doing it is not how it should be done, and I'm not sure how his contract is, but obviously that's something that the NBA does not want him to be doing in public. And even with Tupac, you know, he ended up falling into that character in real life and, you know, it took his life over through thinking he was somebody who he wasn't. He was definitely a very talented musician and he was talented in other things, but he wasn't a thug, he wasn't a killer, he wasn't anything like that. But that movie helped play a role in him acting that out in real life. I'm not saying the movie was the main reason that he was acting like that, but it did influence him in some type of way, I believe. And of course, we have many of our youth who um, get caught up listening to certain artists or watching certain movies. And next thing you know, they're trying to portray the life of a criminal, the life of a thug. And it doesn't matter where you live. It doesn't matter if you're from the hood or from a middle class family or even if you're rich. That's still not who you're supposed to be. Even if you're from the hood, it doesn't mean you're supposed to be a thug and kill your own people and sell drugs. That's not who God created you to be. That's the image. And those are lies from the music industry and from all type of programming and you know Hollywood and all type of things that we've been subject to, but that's not who we were created to be. And I wanna say one more thing as well, and it's just my personal opinion, but um, I see Ja Morant with these different hair colors. Sometimes his dreads are like green or purple or blue. You know, some of his dreads would be dyed a different color. And uh, in my opinion, it's just a sign of him not being mentally stable. The first person I can remember doing that as an athlete was Dennis Rodman. Now, I could be wrong, but that's just who I remember. And he definitely was not mentally stable, and he was not somebody who we should have been looking up to. And again, I don't mean to disrespect anybody. I mean, you know, if you have your hair like that, that's on you. But I just don't think it's a good look, especially for so-called regular black men who are trying to get jobs and work in society, you know, it's a whole different story. If you're a professional athlete and you're a rapper, those guys live a different life than us. But I'm just gonna keep it real. It's hard for people to take you serious if you're a grown man and your hair is dyed all type of different colors. And again, you know, this is just my personal opinion. I don't mean any disrespect to anyone. But uh, even if you look at some of the top players in the league, you look at LeBron, you look at Curry, Somebody like Kawhi, whether you like them or not, that's not my point. My point is, I've never seen any of them dye their hair any type of crazy color, but they are known for carrying themselves like men on and off the court. And again, whether you like them or not, I don't care, I'm just making a point. Like, you don't typically see people who are very responsible and have their affairs in order, you know, dyeing their hair all type of random colors. That's, you, that's typically something that females do. That's more of a female trait. So I don't know what's going on with Ja Morant, you know with that but I, I do see a lot of young men doing that and it's just not a good look overall but uh, anyway I'm gonna pretty much wrap it up there you know I hope the best for John Moran I hope he stays out of trouble and you know he finds who he is and he really starts to 
be himself and stop trying to seek outside validation. I don't know what he's going through, but you know, as black, so-called black men, we definitely have more to offer than to be, you know, so-called thugs and just living a life that is not healthy. So, I mean, I really hope some of you young men, especially, I hope you really understand what I'm saying and that, um, you know, that there's, there's no future in being a thug and being a criminal and living a wicked lifestyle. There's really no reward in it. Typically, you're going to end up in an early grave or you're going to end up in prison. But I'm going to pretty much wrap it up there. At the end of the day, the Lord is always in control and he will always have the final word. I'm out. Peace.